This module covers general information regarding the California Smog Check Program. It is not all-inclusive and does not replace or supersede any applicable Smog Check or Automotive Repair Act laws and regulations. Here is a list of topics that will be covered during this training module. Introduction, Smog Check Overview, Inspection Procedures, and Smog Check Inspection Video. The Bureau of Automotive Repair plays a critical role by implementing and regulating the smog check program mandated by state and federal laws. BAR licenses stations and inspectors, certifies the equipment used to perform the smog check, and oversees industry compliance. BAR establishes emission standards, also known as pass-fail cut points, for vehicles. The smog check program has greatly reduced the amount of air pollution created by tens of millions of cars in California. According to the Air Resources Board, the program removes approximately 400 tons of smog-forming pollutants from California's air every day. The word smog is derived from two words, smoke and fog. Smog is generally produced from vehicular and industrial emissions. Photochemical smog is the result of the chemical reaction of sunlight, nitrogen oxides, and volatile organic compounds in the atmosphere and results in poor air quality. Ozone is formed by hydrocarbons, which is raw fuel from a vehicle tailpipe or fuel tank linkage, and nitrogen oxides, which are contained in vehicle tailpipe emissions undergoing a chemical reaction aided by the sun. Ozone can irritate the respiratory system by aggravating asthma, inflaming and damaging the lining of the lungs, and reducing lung functions. Ozone is also known to aggravate chronic lung diseases, such as emphysema and bronchitis. Studies suggest that ozone may also reduce the body's ability to fight off bacterial infections in the respiratory system. Despite significant success in reducing overall pollution levels, Air monitoring shows that over 90% of Californians breathe unhealthy levels of one or more air pollutants during some part of the year. Health-based ambient air quality standards set by the Air Resources Board identify outdoor pollutant levels that are considered safe for the public, including those most at risk from exposure to air pollution, such as children, the elderly, and people who are active outdoors. In setting air quality standards, the Air Resources Board has identified certain air pollutants as toxic air contaminants. Long-term exposure to toxins may have serious effects, such as cancer, even when exposure is low. Both traditional pollutants and toxic air contaminants are measured statewide to assess the success of programs for improving air quality. While there are numerous and varied contributors to California's air pollution, Nearly half is from motor vehicles. Hydrocarbon emissions from a vehicle come from unburned fuel. High levels of hydrocarbon emissions indicate incomplete combustion, which can be the result of low engine compression. If high enough, this could result in a failed smog check inspection. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas that is fatal to many life forms in moderate concentrations. Carbon monoxide emissions are often the byproduct of an overly rich fuel mixture. Unhealthy levels of carbon monoxide emissions result in a vehicle failing its smog check inspection. Nitrogen oxides is an odorless gas that helps create smog, giving smog its characteristic brown color. Nitrogen oxide is produced when the temperature in the combustion chamber exceeds 2500 degrees. Excessive combustion chamber temperature could be caused by a lean mixture advanced ignition timing, carbon buildup, a malfunctioning exhaust gas recirculation system, or a malfunctioning coolant system. High levels of nitrogen oxide emissions result in a vehicle failing its smog check inspection. This section discusses the requirements of the smog check program. Here is a list of topics that will be covered. Vehicles subject to smog check program, smog check program areas, when is a smog check required? Licensed inspector requirements. Licensed station requirements. Smog check station types. And inspection requirements by program area.
vehicles subject to the smog check program include gasoline vehicles, 1976 and newer. This includes alternative fueled vehicles under 14,000 pounds. Diesel vehicles, 1998 and newer, under 14,000 pounds. And hybrid vehicles, 2000 and newer. The smog check program divides California into three areas. Vehicles registered in enhanced areas must receive an applicable BAR OBD inspection system test, also known as a BAR OIS test, or an acceleration simulation mode, or ASM smog check, unless the vehicle is not compatible. Also, a portion of the vehicles in these areas are required to pass a smog check inspection and obtain a certification from a STAR test and repair or STAR test only station. Vehicles registered in basic or change of ownership areas must receive an applicable BAR OIS test or two-speed idle smog check. Vehicles in enhanced and basic areas are required to be smogged every other year as part of their registration renewal for vehicles that are eight model years or older. Keep in mind that the eight model year exemption does not apply to diesel powered vehicles. Upon change of ownership of vehicles that are more than four model years old, keep in mind that the four model year change of ownership exemption does not apply to diesel powered vehicles. And upon initial registration of a vehicle in California, in change of ownership areas, you are required to smog your vehicle upon change of ownership if that vehicle is more than four model years old. Keep in mind that the four model year change of ownership exemption does not apply to diesel powered vehicles here either, as well as upon initial registration of a vehicle into California. To become a licensed smog check inspector, the candidate must meet certain experience and training requirements and pass a bar licensing examination. Licenses must be renewed every two years. Maintaining a current license requires successful completion of a bar approved continuing education class. To become a licensed smog check facility, the station must first be registered with bar as an automotive repair dealer. The station must also meet minimum equipment and facility requirements while employing licensed smog check inspectors. The station must also keep necessary service and repair records for a minimum of three years, in accordance with Title 16, California Code of Regulations Section 3307. Test-only stations are licensed by BAR to test vehicles. They cannot perform any repairs. Directed vehicles and gross polluters must be certified by a STAR test only or STAR test and repair station. STAR test and repair stations that have met certain performance criteria will be able to test and certify all vehicles, including directed vehicles and gross polluters. They also perform repair assistance services under BAR's Consumer Assistance Program or CAP. Repair only stations are licensed to perform diagnosis and repairs on most vehicles they cannot perform any smog check tests. In enhanced areas, most vehicles are required to be certified every two years during their DMV registration renewal process. Upon change of ownership or initial registration in California, all vehicles more than four years old are required to obtain a smog check inspection. A portion of vehicles in enhanced areas are required to obtain a smog check certificate from a STAR test only or STAR test and repair station. Vehicles registered in enhanced areas must receive an applicable BAR OBD inspection system test, also known as a BAR OIS test, or an emissions test using a dynamometer, unless the vehicle cannot be tested on this equipment. Exceptions include all-wheel drive vehicles and those with non-disengageable traction control. In basic areas, vehicles are required to be certified every two years during their DMV registration renewal process and on change of ownership and upon initial registration in California. Vehicles registered in a basic area are not required to have an emissions test on a dynamometer. Instead, these vehicles are given an applicable BAR OIS test or two-speed idle emissions test. In change of ownership areas, vehicles are required to be certified only upon change of ownership or on initial registration in California. Vehicles registered in a change of ownership area 
receive an applicable bar OIS test or two-speed idle emissions test. The remainder of this training module will cover the smog check inspection process. Here is a list of topics that will be covered during this section. Vehicle verification, smog check inspection elements, overview of smog check procedures, and reporting smog check results. A bar licensed smog check inspector verifies that the vehicle matches the registration renewal form and scans the information into the inspection system. The inspection system communicates with the vehicle information database to determine if the station is authorized to inspect the vehicle. Using a barcode scanner, the DMV registration renewal form will automatically enter information about the vehicle into the inspection system. If the inspection is for change of ownership, or if the consumer forgets their renewal form, the inspector must manually enter the vehicle identification information into the inspection system. After entering in specific license information and a confidential access code, the inspector proceeds to the test mode of the inspection system. The inspector manually enters the vehicle information, engine size, transmission type, etc. at the inspection system screen prompts. The smog check inspection using the EIS is divided into three parts. The first part is a visual inspection. The second part is an emissions test and the third is a functional test. Please note that these parts are the main components of a smog check inspection, but do not contain information needed to conduct a smog check inspection. Please refer to the smog check manual for more specific information on inspection procedures. During the visual inspection, the inspector verifies that the vehicle emissions components are connected and have not been modified. The emissions test is performed by the inspector using the EIS to determine the actual composition of the exhaust gases and emissions produced by the vehicle and exiting the tailpipe. During the functional test, the inspector will test the operation of certain emissions control systems to ensure that they are working properly. This chart contains the elements of a smog check inspection using the EIS. The Emissions Inspection System reviews all data entered by the inspector and analyzes the tailpipe sampling results of the emissions test. Using electronically stored vehicle-specific parameters, the EIS determines if the vehicle passes or fails all required parts of the smog check inspection. The results of the test are transmitted to the state's vehicle information database. If the vehicle passes the test, the results are electronically sent to the DMV to meet registration requirements. After each test, whether the vehicle passes or fails, the Emissions Inspection System prints out the entire set of results on a Vehicle Inspection Report, or VIR. The licensed inspector is required to sign and date under penalty of perjury a statement on the VIR indicating that the test was performed correctly and give a copy to the consumer. This video is intended to provide a basic understanding of the procedures involved in conducting ASM smog check inspections using a BAR 97 Emissions Inspection System, or EIS. For the full procedures on all smog check testing, refer to the latest version of the smog check manual. The smog check manual can be obtained from BAR's website at www.smogcheck.ca.gov. The inspector begins by selecting smog check mode on the EIS. Inspectors must follow the EIS prompts to input all vehicle information. The inspector then uses the registration renewal form provided by the consumer to scan the vehicle information into the emissions analyzer, making sure that the registration form matches the vehicle being inspected. If no renewal form is provided, the inspector can manually enter the vehicle identification and license plate numbers. The vehicle's VIN plate may also be scanned to obtain the VIN. The EIS transfers the vehicle and inspector information to the Vehicle Information Database, or VID. Entry of vehicle specifications is the next step in the process.
During this step, as well as all other steps, accuracy is critical to ensure all vehicles receive a proper inspection. Some data entered during the smog test cannot be re-entered, and if entered incorrectly, the smog test will have to be aborted and started again. It is unlawful for an inspector to enter information from a vehicle other than the one that is currently being tested. The inspector enters into the EIS the vehicle type, year, make, model, number of cylinders, fuel type, emissions certification type, transmission, odometer mileage, exhaust configuration, and gross vehicle weight rating for trucks. The next step is preparing the vehicle for an acceleration simulation mode or ASM emissions test using a two-wheel drive dynamometer. The dynamometer simulates driving conditions by applying resistance to the wheels. This is necessary to test for oxides of nitrogen or NOx, which is primarily produced when the vehicle is under a load. The inspector must follow the EIS prompts to determine if the vehicle can be tested on the dynamometer. Be aware that some vehicles' designs are incompatible with a two-wheel drive dynamometer. Any attempt to operate such vehicles on a two-wheel dynamometer could cause damage to the vehicle or test equipment. Incompatible vehicles include, but are not limited to, vehicles equipped with non-disengageable traction control, full-time four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and vehicles that are too large or too heavy to be safely operated on a dynamometer. The inspector must check the vehicle's tire pressure, restrain the vehicle, and when necessary, position the cooling fan. The cooling fan must be used when the ambient temperature reaches 72 degrees or above. When prompted by the EIS, the inspector will obtain the vehicle's RPM reading and insert the analyzer probe into the vehicle's tailpipe. While performing an ASM test, the inspector operates the vehicle at 15 miles per hour. The EIS then prompts the inspector to advance to the second part of the ASM test, in which the vehicle is operated at 25 miles per hour. The proper gear selection must be applied to receive the correct emission test results. Automatic transmission shall be tested in drive, and manual transmission shall be tested in second gear unless a higher or lower gear is needed to keep within the EIS specified RPM range. Vehicles equipped with multiple driving modes, for example, low traction, performance, or sport, must be tested in the standard or economy setting. Also, do not engage any type of towing modes. Note that aborts which occur after beginning an ASM test can affect the station's star score. During the visual inspection, the inspector identifies each emissions component required to be on the vehicle and makes sure that all components are properly connected. Refer to the smog check manual to determine if an emissions control component passes, fails, is tampered, missing, modified, disconnected, defective, non-applicable, or requires an executive order or EO from the California Air Resources Board. Inspectors must use all available information necessary to determine the vehicle's emission control requirements, including but not limited to the underhood emission control label, a current emission control application guide, emission control repair manuals, emission component location guides, manufacturer emission control recalls, vacuum hose routing diagrams, air resources board EO parts listings, the aftermarket part label, and any reliable vehicle manufacturer sources. In some cases, a vehicle may have a bar referee label that identifies emission control requirements. The liquid fuel leak test is not required on vehicles exclusively powered by diesel, compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas, or liquefied petroleum gas. The purpose of this inspection is to determine if there is fuel coming from the vehicle's fuel delivery, metering, or evaporation systems. A visible drop or puddle shall constitute a failure. The liquid fuel leak inspection shall be conducted with the engine running. Use extreme caution when working around moving parts and ensure the transmission is in park or neutral with the parking brake on. 
The inspector shall visually inspect the following components if they are exposed and visibly accessible. Gasoline fuel tanks, external fuel pumps, carburetors, charcoal canisters, fuel injectors, fuel delivery and return lines, gasoline fill pipes and associated hoses, tanks, connections, any valves connected to any other fuel evaporative component, fuel caps, fuel vapor hoses, fuel pressure regulators, and fuel filters. An inspector may refuse to inspect a vehicle or may abort an inspection if a liquid fuel leak presents a safety hazard. If no liquid fuel leak is found, the vehicle shall pass this portion of the inspection and the inspector shall enter P for pass at the fuel leak's prompt. If a liquid fuel leak is detected, the inspector shall enter F for defective into the EIS fuel leak's prompt. Inspectors must indicate on the vehicle inspection report, or VIR, the location of any liquid fuel leak. Visible smoke test procedures are similar for gasoline and diesel, except when the bar snap tests are performed during the smog check inspection and the pass-fail standards are different. Refer to the Visible Smoke Series section of this training for all details on performing a visible smoke test. The conditions and procedures for performing a visible smoke test for gasoline vehicles and recording the results shall be as follows. Idle test. Observe the tailpipe exhaust plume of the vehicle for 10 seconds. Crankcase test. Observe the engine crankcase for 10 seconds. Bar snap test. Quickly push and release the accelerator pedal from the idle position to between 2,000 and 3,000 RPM then immediately allow the engine to return to idle. Any smoke during either of the final two bar snap tests constitutes a failure. Steam shall not constitute a failure. Results must be entered into the EIS using the Other Emission Related Controls category under the Visual Inspection section. If a vehicle fails any portion of the visible smoke test, enter F for defective into the EIS Other Emissions Related category. If the vehicle fails the visible smoke test, the inspector shall document the failure on both the customer and station copies of the VIR under the Other Emissions Related Components section. Clearly indicate the failure reason such as failed visible smoke test or failed for visible smoke. Document what portion of the visible smoke test the vehicle failed, such as crankcase smoke, idle smoke, and or bar snap smoke. Documentation of the failure must also be noted on the customer's final invoice. Next, the inspector performs a series of functional tests that are applicable to the vehicle. The inspector must refer to the smog check manual and proper service manuals to determine which vehicles receive certain tests and to properly complete the functional portion of the smog check inspection. Functional tests include ignition timing, malfunction indicator lamp, onboard diagnostics test, and the fuel cap pressure test. The engine's ignition timing needs to be checked to ensure it's within the manufacturer's specified range. The vehicle's base timing must be within plus or minus three degrees of its manufacturer's specifications. If a manufacturer's range is provided, there is no additional plus or minus three degrees. This is accomplished by using a timing light to inspect the vehicle's base ignition timing according to the vehicle manufacturer's timing inspection procedure. During the malfunction indicator light or mill test, the inspector first looks to see that the mill on the dash of the vehicle is working properly. Next, with the engine running, check if the mill stays on or is blinking. Either of these conditions will cause the vehicle to fail this portion of the test. The EIS has a cable that attaches to the data link connector, or DLC, on most 1996 and newer model year vehicles. The EIS then communicates with the vehicle's onboard computer system to retrieve vehicle information. 
The results are determined by the EIS. Refer to the smog check manual to determine which model year and types of vehicles are subject to the fuel cap test. The fuel cap tester is either part of or tethered to the EIS. After using the adapter guide to choose the appropriate adapter, the vehicle's fuel cap is secured to the tester in the same manner as it is to the vehicle. The cap is then tested and the results are determined by the EIS. After entering the result of each functional test, the smog check inspection is complete. The EIS will send the overall inspection results to the VID and print two copies of the VIR. Sign both copies and provide one copy of the VIR to the consumer and keep the other for your records. For more information about the visible smoke test, low pressure fuel evaporative test, and the smog check program, please refer to www.smogcheck.ca.gov. Thank you for viewing Module 1 of the California Smog Check Program Training Series.